Hi, I'm Wayne Blanchard. I am a certified financial planner and a member of the Garrett Planning Network. Our topic for today is the disadvantages of bilateral treaties in attracting investments. Now, this is a, a kind of a political topic and it's one of those things that you don't really ever know the correct answer to. But as my background is in economics and as an economics person, you know, we economists sort of feel like everybody ought to have free trade because the whole idea of economics and an economic system is that people do what they do best in order to make a whole economy uh, work more smoothly. So for example, if somebody else, let's say the oil rich companies, are better at providing oil and maybe we are better at growing wheat, then we should be able to uh, sell our wheat and do what we do best is growing wheat and let them do what they do best as far as you know, producing oil. Now, in an ideal world, that would really work well because we'd have free trade and things would happen. But what does happen is we have two little things that, that mess us up. We have people involved and we have governments that are involved. And we, we go through periods where we want our own country to be completely uh, able to stand on its own. And maybe they want their country to be able to stand on its own. Therefore, they don't want to give up all of their wheat production, so they want to try to grow wheat, and maybe we want to try to produce oil. And no matter how good or bad. So now we want to protect our people that are, are doing the oil exploration or, or producing some oil, and they want to protect their wheat growers. Well, that means they have to protect their prices, and so we get into tariffs and all the different things that are involved there, and we develop a lot of imperfect trading systems and imperfect ways to do things. So then we come along with things like these bilateral treaties. Now, the bilateral treaties supposedly would be set up to kind of break down those barriers and, and, and stop some of that protectionist mode things. But countries are still countries, people are still people, and governments are still governments. Therefore, we have to always remember that there are going to be biases in these treaties. So we have to understand what the biases are and we can't expect them to work all the time. Matter of fact, that's why if you go back through history, you'll see that some of these treaties maybe work a little bit, some don't work at all, some work really well, but it all has to be a matter of how, how well the benefits are, are spread across the board. And it's, again, I hate to say it, but it's politics and we are kind of held hostage to politics and we're always going to be held hostage to politics. You could, you could do great dissertations on, on this very subject of bilateral treaties and do they work or not, and what are the advantages and disadvantages. Let's just say that there are advantages and there are disadvantages. The biggest disadvantages come with the fact that bilateral treaties aren't necessarily going to give equal status to both sides and leave it at that. Thank you.